Hi guys, how are you doing? Senior Gaming here and in today's episode I'm bringing you Blade Idol and we're gonna talk pet. So if you're a Blade Idol player or perhaps Idol Gamer then consider subscribing to my channel as I post as often as possible and bring you best tips and advice. Right then, so the pets in Blade Idol give us additional stats which is very very important and obviously give us a little bit of visuals. So as you see on, on a screen attached, the pets trying to follow every single move of our character usually with a very poor result, once we move on the map like a maniac using low cooldown skills. But nevertheless, they are a great addition to overall growth of your character. So first of all, let's discuss obviously how we get in a pet in the first place. So the pet itself can be actually obtained from dungeon, so if we head over to dungeon and the second one as you're gonna unlock the game is gonna be obviously pet dungeon. And that will get you straight into obviously your later stage, depending where you are. Currently, as you see, I'm on a 17th chapter, now on a fifth um, stage of that very chapter. And as you see, every single chapter got 10 stages. What you need to bear in mind that between stage one to nine, you'll be only obtaining pet souls. And these are needed to upgrade uh, your very same pet for this kind. And then that will increase their style level and obviously boost their stats. And only on level 10, as you see, there is this additional reward, which pretty much looks like a card of this particular pet. And once you beat level 10 on particular chapter, then finally you unlocking that pet. So what it means effectively, you can farm a lot of pet soul, but until you reach that level 10, you're actually unable to do anything with it because you have not obtained that pet as of yet. Right then, so having that out of the way, let's also review the equipped skills. So this is definitely a recommended great setup to farm a pet dungeon. We're talking here about 10 different waves and pretty big um, a map. When it comes as well to a, um, a zoom of the camera, you'll see there is a lot of field to cover. Therefore, we go in for um, most of the skills will be the most powerful ones, but we also go in for discharge boom so we can effic efficiently move across the map. We're focusing mainly here on AOE damage as there will be pets coming from a different angles. So that is the setup you really want to go for. Okay, so we have discussed now these two bits. Let's now head over to a pet section itself which sits on our main bar at the bottom cannot really be missed. So now when it actually comes to pets, definitely first thing which um, it stands out, as you see, we've got selection of all and we've got three different types of pets. So we've got a first uh, selection of the pets, it's called Beastmen and they will mainly will boost our accuracy. Then we've got an Undead, which will boost our defense. And finally, we've got Animal, which boosts our damage. And definitely when you're just starting out, it's recommended that you'll, you will go for the pets that will increase your damage. And we're talking here about pet attack. As you only got handful of them, and this is additional damage multiplier. I have recently put up a video when I'm talking about how damage is calculated. So if you haven't seen it, I definitely recommend you watch that out. And then you'll understand why uh, choosing this damage to start off is so important. So if we head over to all and, and, and we sort of check first free pets. So as you see, pig itself will highly increase pet attack percentage. You know, in comparison, we got 80% here. These two statistics are pretty minor. Then we're going into giant peak, obviously, because it's the next pet with a slightly higher percentage. And then we move into bat, which will also increase our attack, but just only 8%. But as you clearly see, there is one of the statistics which completely stand out. And this is a undead type, which I have mentioned, which boosts our defense. So pretty much this type of pet will look and increase um, a defense uh, much more higher than uh, any other statistics. And therefore, when you're just starting out, as mentioned earlier, we focused mainly on animal, which will increase that damage. So if you just hang a handful of pets, hit that uh, pet attack, and then later on, you'll be choosing a different selection of your pets depending on your needs. Also, what is definitely worth noting, that in later stages, you will be choosing pets for a party effect boosting damage. And we're gonna get to get that in just a second. Um, but you also will be on a situation like, for example, where I am now, where you need to aid your progress or 
you know, you want to push dungeon and stuff like that. And, and for example, you need more accuracy. So this is where we're talking about pets now. So currently I farm stage 1650, but without the pets actually, which I'm currently having with me, I would not be able to farm it efficiently as I lack quite a lot of accuracy. Meaning if I'll take all these pets away and I'll try to replace them perhaps with a higher damage, I might have higher damage, but I will completely miss out on hitting the monsters. So if we currently see the, the orc itself, um, it boosts my accuracy by 2800. Then we've got a lizard man, which is another 2.8k. Then we've got turtle of 3.2k. So pretty much the selection which I'm having now every single pet increasing my accuracy quite drastically and that allows me to push and actually farm in a higher stage than i would normally do so so that's why depending on the situation you will be choosing the pets uh, to suit your needs and obviously try uh, different strategies as you're gonna go along and then finally when you feel comfortable you should definitely go and look for something which obviously boosts your experience and gold setup especially if you're on a fire idle mode like i do now i should not use any pets to boost my damage or any pe pets to boost my accuracy i should purely be there for a farming principles and i don't think i'm far away from there now i just need to boost my accuracy slightly more and then go for these setups and exactly what we mean with these setups is for example if i go on a first pet which is peak there is a special party effect and what that tells me that if the peak is paired up in a party with a star grade giant peak which is just very next pet these two together will increase experience by 14 percent and increase gold by 14 percent and this and this very first uh, set of pets can actually be paired together so you only require the two pets and pretty much every single set after require three different pets so for the instance as mentioned we've got these two we also got wolf uh, we got wolf null and werewolf so if we actually check one of them as you see if in the same party with the two other monsters i mentioned we also increase in further gold and so on and so on so once you feel comfortable you obviously will have to play around and aim for these particular sets in order to actually get most out of the game so then um, as mentioned earlier we will be also discussing a pet soul so as you see now you can clearly um, go and every single time review your pet soul as mentioned earlier you'll be able to actually access pet soul before you can land your pets as you see i've actually been able to assess some pet soul of the monsters i'm not even able to unlock yet as i'm still trying to collect sours and the way you're gonna do it once you start farming more and more efficiently obviously you'll be progressing down the ladder and then you're able to finally merge pets itself like with any other bit in this game auto register them and you've got chance of upgrading into next grade my recommendation is you will only use for example first common set of pets once you all your common pe pets are maxed out so you want to aim pretty much for every single pet being on a seven star and then start using their their soul to go and obviously upgrade it to a next grade once you start landing more and more green ones for example make sure you upgrade them to a seven star and then move on further and further down so I think that will be it. This is going to be a basic principle. As you see, I have myself not unlocked every single pet yet. Um, and there will be a definitely different strategies for a late stage of the game. But the basic principle will remain unchanged. And I think the main thing will be, you know, just looking on how f you feel comfortable within the game itself. Can you actually farm it more with the experience gold principle? Or you would need accuracy like myself now. Or perhaps you can go and maximize the damage output and try to push uh, further either dungeon or the game progress itself. So that will be it guys, I hope you enjoyed it, if you have, then consider subscribing, thank you very much for watching, and as always, I'll see you next time.